Hi, I'm Matthew Stavros from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. In this short video, I'm going to share some of my thoughts uh, about what makes an effective live presentation, the kind of short, dense presentation that someone might deliver uh, in a classroom or an academic conference, or perhaps even a job talk. First, it's important to reflect on what precisely a live presentation is, and for that matter, what it is not. Now, in this day and age, it's possible to deliver your ideas from one place to another around the globe instantaneously. Now, it's precisely for this reason that it's more important than ever to rethink what it means to stand before people and talk to them in a live setting. Let me begin by talking about what a live presentation should not be. First, be sure what you're delivering to your audience is, is not something that would best be delivered as a written text. If you're just going to read to them, save everyone the time, the energy, and the money, and, and just email it to them. Second, short presentations, and, and let me stress that most of the research presentations you'll give in your career will be under 20 minutes long. These kinds of short presentations should not be thought of as, as full, complete theses. They must be much more narrow. You simply don't have the time. I believe that a live presentation should be thought of as a very special opportunity to engage with your audience in, in, in a uniquely verbal and a visceral and, and ideally a personal way. Make your presence in the room part of the show. Narrow your content enough to provide an engaging entree to your ideas, but don't try to provide a, a totally comprehensive overview. I think your goal should be to put yourself and your research on people's radar. Make them want to learn more about you, to Google your name, to read your work, to invite you to their campuses, and perhaps even to hire you. A few tips on speaking. First of all, I think the most important thing is to know your audience. 99% of the time, you'll be speaking to people who don't know your topic as well as you do. Get used to that. Learn to pitch your ideas to a level that's accessible enough to help the, the less knowledgeable people follow along while still, even if ever so slightly, pushing the boundaries of understanding. Second, remember that speech and writing are very different modes of communication. Speak like you speak, not like you write. Use abbreviations and colloquial terms, even fragments and run-on sentences. If they're going to help you, get across your meaning in a more accessible way. Now, we all know the pain of listening to someone read a long lecture. Not only is it unpleasant, it's actually more difficult to follow. Finally, privilege clarity and quality over quantity. You won't have the time to say everything you might want to say, so don't even try. A clear, medium-paced presentation with less information can be much more effective than one that's choked with details yet hurried and garbled. Let me just add a few words about style. First of all, try to give the impression that you want to be there. And, and remember that the people listening to you are usually people who, who want to be there. They're genuinely interested in you. Make eye contact and look around the room. And finally, something I think that's extremely important is to modulate your voice. Don't sound like a robot. And if you want to emphasize a point, don't raise your voice and start shouting. I'll tell you, the most powerful thing you can do to emphasize a point is to simply pause. Pauses make people stop and listen. A few tips on using slides. When you think about slides, the first thing you have to ask yourself is whether or not you even need them. Because you might not, and if you don't, don't use them. If you do, though... Think about what slides should be. They should show things, not tell things. Telling is your job. They should include images and graphs and charts and keywords. They need to, they need to enliven a talk. They shouldn't be a crutch. You shouldn't rely on your slides to tell the story for you. They shouldn't distract the audience from you. And you should never have too many slides. And please, please, don't fill your slide with a bunch of text that's meant to just be read because it's probably duplicating what you're saying and it's probably just distracting.
The next few slides introduce what I call the accessibility curve. Remember, pitching to your audience at their level is of the highest importance. If you lose them, the talk becomes rather meaningless. Now, this graph has two axes. On the left is a measure of the audience's familiarity with your topic, ranging from complete non-specialists to people who essentially do the same research that you do. In the middle range, you have people who, for example, might work in your same discipline, but maybe not in your same field or topic. Now, on the horizontal axis is the amount of time you have for your presentation. If you were giving a talk to a group of primarily uh, non-specialists, say uh, undergraduates or a, a general conference uh, that wasn't geared to your specific field, uh, you'll want to spend a fair amount of time gradually introducing your topic, getting the audience uh, up to speed. Only then will you be able to introduce your core ideas, your, your new ideas. Now, alas, with such an audience, it's not possible to venture too far into the more esoteric elements of your research. And yet, nonetheless, it's not a bad idea to give the more keen listeners a small taste of, of what, you, what you have. You just can't linger there too long or, or you might end up losing them. When speaking to a more knowledgeable audience, you can spend less time getting people up to speed and more time dwelling on your own findings. And then, of course, when you touch on the, the higher order information, you can soar much higher and for longer. Just don't get carried away. Incidentally, the level il illustrated in this slide here corresponds quite closely to that uh, of most professional academic conferences. Now, let me stress that the, 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 the dialing up and the down of this accessibility curve is not merely a function of how much detail or erudition there is in your talk. It's a matter of how much time you spend getting your audience in the right place, providing them the, the background necessary uh, to think about your topic in meaningful ways. When you're, you're given the rare opportunity to speak to people who work on an area very similar to your own, then you can have a lot more fun pushing the boundaries of your topic and your field. Unfortunately, though, such opportunities are much more rare than you might expect. In sum, be accessible. Privilege quality over quantity. Don't let the slides be a distraction or a crutch. Have fun, get people's attention, and always, always, always stay within time. Anyway, I hope these uh, suggestions have been helpful. Thanks for watching.